for God's sake, America. Why did you have to go and commit police brutality again and start nationwide riots while I'm busy doing big boy stuff for a few weeks? I'm on a schedule here, and if I'm being honest, it's really inconvenient that you couldn't have just waited to turn yourselves inside out when I had more time on my hands to talk about it and put videos out. But hey ho, I'm done now, so allow me to immediately go off on one, and proceed to mostly point and laugh at both sides, but I'll also talk about points that they're getting right. Let's start with the left, because that's normally where most comedic value lies, and this is absolutely no exception. The first thing is this trendy little hashtag that they've come up with, hashtag defund the police. You're trying to seduce me. My god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay Yo, real shit? Now you're speaking my language, son. You're telling me that individuals and communities should take up the responsibility of defending themselves and their property instead of the government? Oh, hell yeah. Squad up and grab some guns, abolish that whole tax burden of the police, restore citizen militias, decentralise power back to the community level, and be responsible for your own protection? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that the mainstream left is calling for the end of all gun control and abolition of law enforcement. Oh, wait a minute. Of course they're not. That's not what they mean in the slightest. What they actually mean is either shift the tax burden to some other bureaucratic tumour, or remodel the police force as social workers, as they're putting it. So now, instead of the boys in blue arresting innocent people for possession of a plant, it will be the boys in pink killing innocent people for posting offensive tweets. Do that and you'll only be halfway to becoming the United Kingdom. All you need to complete that journey is to start handing out criminal sentencing for the ownership of scissors and declare Nancy Pelosi the Queen. Here's the funny question. When you abolish the police, how do you collect the gargantuan mass of taxes that you would need to complete your social engineering projects that you love so much? Who will pay for free healthcare when there isn't the implication of a police gun to your head if you refuse. After all, if a project is voluntarily funded, then it's a charity. Oh, but oh no, we can't allow charity to function properly, can we? People are evil and selfish, so you need to extort them. How else can you fund trans-child hormone therapy? You can't have your sky-high tax rates without explicit or even implicit state punishment for those who would dare to disobey it. Say a reclusive town in, hmm, Texas, for example, decides they don't want to play by your rules anymore and decide to live on their own, become self-sufficient, homeschool their children, <gasps> and train with guns in order to defend themselves from aggressors. My guess is you'd create Waco Part 2, although this time the FBI agents that torch and kill the entire community will all be either trans-disabled, non-white, or better yet, all of the above because using the power of this state to murder women and children is okay as long as the murderers have progressive demographic representation or call themselves social workers. The truth of the matter is you don't care at all about ending statist violence, you just want to make sure the boots are stomping on the correct faces. You don't care for self-defence, responsibility, self-determination or individual choice, you just want the world to march to your orders and punish those who refuse by any means necessary. You only want freedom for those you deem are deserving of it, and you'll strip them of it the second they step out of line. Council culture taught us this clear as day. If you actually want to abolish the police and restore self-defence, then oh boy, I'd make a sign and march across my city at the drop of a hat. But you don't. You're chanting defund the police as a scam, to continue their forceful redistribution of wealth, only this time it will go to the right people, apparently. It's a fucking money grab and not much else. Come to me with open arms if you want to talk about community self-policing through gun ownership, self-determination, and making individuals claim responsibility for their actions. But don't come to me if you just want to make the Netflix adaptation of the KGB or just move the stolen money to another pocket. The fact is, you can't steal that money without the badge and a gun, so you'll be content to never see it go, just under your control and oppressing the people that you want it to. I want nobody to be oppressed, and by that I mean I want everybody to have their full rights and not being stolen from 
is one of them. You will never have equality if you seek to steal from one group to give to another. That is literally what the police already do. You're just not happy about the groups that they've chosen. Oh, and I have absolutely no time whatsoever for any person who talks about the corruption of the police, systemic racism, privilege, and how evil the rich are, if they then go on to claim that electing Biden will solve it all. (laughs) Ha! That stupid old prick has been getting filthy rich off of oppressing minorities for decades. He would only expand the government and thereby increase the scale of corruption alongside it. He would try to sign into law gun control bills that will result in the police abusing their power and killing American citizens in confiscations and red flag raids as they already have done, Duncan Lemp, and make the entire population more vulnerable to the police and their oppressive power. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not for a second saying that the Republicans will do any sort of a better job, but you are a sorry excuse for a revolutionary if you think that continuing the status quo will fix a single thing. You are a total joke, and the politicians you vote for are laughing at you just as much as we are. So I'll begin my transition of getting round to addressing the right by actually giving my own statement and opinion on this whole matter. But I admit that race relations and their nuances across the Atlantic aren't exactly my area of expertise. So from the information that I've had access to, I believe it is true that black and other ethnic minority groups in America have been and continue to be adversely disadvantaged by the system, for a lack of a better term. I mean, I don't really understand how that can be argued against when segregation and the Jim Crow laws are still in living memory for a lot of people. Of course there are still going to be problems, but the biggest exacerbator of these problems is, without a doubt, still the government. It's not some sort of massive, obscure collective like the whites, but the smallest and most privileged collective of all, politicians. Politicians literally created the ghettos for black people to live in, drew them on maps, and gave these maps to the banks under the instructions to give bad or no loans at all to people from there. Look this up, it's called redlining, and those places that they redlined and more, are still financially disadvantaged by the banks to this day. When the government literally drew borders on a map and restricted any kind of investment into them, of course they're still going to be poor decades later. It's one hell of a vicious cycle to literally create a bad neighbourhood, then never allowing the neighbourhood to become good. Then when you've already hit these communities across the head with the bat of poverty, you create the war on drugs. Areas of poverty were fabricated, then punished for being poor, as people with nothing to live for will engage in self-destructive behaviours such as drug consumption. Not only did they manufacture the conditions for drugs to emerge, the CIA even imported drugs into these communities to get people addicted and then cracked down on addiction. It's the perfect recipe for breeding tyranny. Turn communities poor, import drugs, punish them for using drugs. If politicians actually wanted to help impoverished black communities, they would end the war on drugs overnight. The fact that Obama had eight years to do this, and never did, tells you the fact loud and clear. It's not black versus white, it's government versus individual. In a more abstract sense, a government is always incentivized to have a poor and violent group at the bottom of the rung. In the case of the US, they chose groups on the basis of ethnicity. Everything I've outlined that the government did to black communities, well they've done identical or incredibly similar things to many other non-white ethnicities such as Native Americans. Governments will always try to draw a line in the sand where there is the most oppressed class. The American government chose that line to be race. If the system was designed to disadvantage certain races, then it must be true that some form of systemic racism exists. Gun control is a form of it. The Mulford Act was passed because the Black Panthers were arming and protecting themselves from the police, and now that form of systemic racism has leaked out onto the whole country and no longer cares about race. It's managing to make the entire population more of an oppressed class, and what more could they want than that? 
So this is why I cannot agree with those on the right who recite the FBI racial crime statistics until they're red in the face, but will never have the conversation of why 13% of the population actually commits 50% of the crime. I'm not excusing the actions of any violent criminal, and I would have to concede defeat to you if there wasn't such clear evidence of disproportional oppression but the truth is America is not anywhere near as free as they would like to believe. What you have to do when you cite the crime statistics is explain to me why you believe that black people as a group would commit as much crime as they do now if the things I've explained like redlining and the war on drugs didn't exist. From what I've seen, studies conclusively show that white people consume just as many drugs on average as black people but the black people are punished exponentially more for it. What you have to do is cite those bloody statistics and prove that they would be replicated under scientific conditions with no skewed variables. One of the most important things I've learned from studying economics and working so much with statistics is that you can find statistics to tell you just about whatever you want them to. Data collection is only a fraction of the story Correlation doesn't prove causation. When you cite statistics, they're meant to be in the case of your argument, not your entire argument. The next thing that you'll be told is that blacks as a group have the lowest level IQ of all racial groups. This is true at the moment, but I reckon most of these people don't know that a great deal of average IQ stats are proven to be environmental and greatly subject to change. The truth is when you look at racial demographics and intelligence across a varied group of countries spanning different continents, and especially over the course of time, the findings can quickly become inconclusive. To save yourselves doing all of that research required, do yourselves a favour and listen to as many talks as you can from Thomas Sowell when he talks about race and facts. A groiper might think they're the smartest and funniest person to ever grace Twitter when they start citing crime and IQ stats to the intellectual, low-hanging fruit liberals that populate that platform, but if they went up against people who are exceptionally well-versed in those fields that they're citing, they wouldn't last five minutes. And coming in as a surprise to absolutely nobody, the Conservatives have been digging their holes at record speed. The group of patriotism, the Constitution and limited government, has hollered and cheered with glee as Lord God Emperor Gimp Daddy Holy Father Donald Trump mobilised the fucking military on US soil, never mind the fact that police there have been a de facto occupying military force for decades. So it should be no surprise that this group of people who claim to love religious freedom and the Second Amendment yet go deaf when they hear the name Waco, have been able to watch the video of a police officer suffocating an unarmed man and immediately start screaming endlessly about the good cops, even though it took the entire nation exploding into riots for him to be arrested and charged for his obvious murder. The term bootlicker really is not strong enough to describe these people and we need to come up with a stronger one in my opinion. The police have absolute immunity for their actions they operate as a mafia through their unions, delivering pizza is a statistically more dangerous job than theirs, they use tear gas on American citizens which is illegal to use in war, they confiscate guns in no-knock raids, they escalate minor confrontations into deadly force, and now we have countless videos from these riots of them using unbelievably excessive force on just about anybody for absolutely no reason. They are an invading army, and these patriots are watching their tyranny and cheering it on. They're an absolute disgrace, a bunch of ostriches with their heads buried in the sand and only listening to narratives that match their own, reciting Fox News like it's gospel and claiming that they hate the mainstream media. They're nothing but sheep in sheep's clothing and they dirty the words liberty and freedom as they like to say, and they especially dirty the Gadsden flag when they decide to fly it. Just as the Liberals are happy to be tread on by their chosen masters, so are these fuckwits. We would agree completely against the looters and destruction of property, but they are going out of their way to ignore the increasing evidence 
that undercover cops are leaving random pallets of bricks around cities and then escalating protests into violent riots. <sighs> I need to stop here because I, I didn't want this to be an angry video, but I could just go on for hours about how goddamn terrible conservatives are. This affair is only just adding more proof to the mountainous pile. This might be the last video I make on the subject and I hope it is. I want my focus for the meantime to be libertarian educational content rather than current events commentary like this, so you can expect more of that in the near future. But for now, take it easy.